Hi everyone, uh, my name is Maria Ortega and I'm a freelance makeup artist based in New York City. Welcome to today's Il Maquillage class. Are you guys able to hear me? Thank you. Um, am I speaking too loud or is the tone and oh my tone, you know, the sound okay? Thank you. <clears throat> So I just wanted to say I live in New York City, so sometimes you might hear a sirens. I live by a hospital, so it might be a little loud from time to time. Um, but once again, I'm going to reintroduce myself. My name is Maria Ortega. I'm a makeup artist based here in New York. I'm originally from California, and I work in various facets of the makeup artist industry. I do TV, film, commercials, and I also do celebrity and red carpet. Um, it's my pleasure to be here with you guys tonight. If at any time you guys cannot hear me, please let me know. Um, I'm gonna try to look at the notes here. So if you see that my eye contact isn't directly on the camera, just know that I'm trying to look at the notes and also kind of like, you know, be aware. While I'll be doing my makeup, I will be zooming in on, you know, like going in a little forward so you can see what I'm doing. Um, well, thank you once again for being here. Um, I'm, it's my honor and um, to be teaching this class with Il Maquillage New York Makeup Products. Uh, Il Maquillage is a tech, focused prestigious uh, prestige beauty uh, brand and um, they are very great at using technology and incorporating it with the customer user experience on their website. If you've ever gone on to buy like a foundation or a concealer, you answer a couple of questions with photos and then you get your foundation uh, or your concealer match and um, I had that wonderful experience myself and now uh, we have these classes where we're able to interact with you guys and you know give you guys a couple of tips and tricks well um <clears throat> most of their products are produced uh, i'm excited for you that for everyone oh um somebody just mentioned that they cannot hear me are you guys able to hear me thank you okay thank you um yeah most of the products are produced in italy and well let's just get started uh today i'm going to be teaching you guys and going over a couple of um quick everyday makeup looks that you guys can do. Uh, now a lot of people are working from home with the pandemic and the, um, you know, the virus situation. So worldwide, a lot of people are taking their classes at, I mean, not taking classes, um, teaching, going to school, working from home, and a lot of that incorporates on-camera videos. Um, also, a lot of friends are hanging out via Zoom, via Skype, all those FaceTimes. This is a quick look that you can do every day. And even when things go back to normal, or if you happen to be an essential worker, you can also do this every day. So let's get started. Um, I will be answering questions. Thank you guys for everyone that replied to my questions. If I asked you guys, if you guys could hear me. Um, well, let's just get into it. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say that I have prepped my skin. I usually do a thorough uh, skincare preparation. I wash my face, I do a double cleanse, I wash my face, I use a micellar water, then I go in with a serum, a moisturizer, and eye cream. Next, we'll start with the uh, first product. Um, <clears throat> this is the Il Maquillage No Filter Poreless Base Smoothing Primer. I really love this primer because it's lightweight. I don't feel like I'm wearing a heavy amount of silicone on my face. And I usually just do one pump. That's sufficient enough. Uh, so what this is going to do is a lot of the times, uh, some of us have uh, enlarged front pores. So what this does is this kind of covers those. It smooths, it provides a smooth base for your face and the foundation or whatever BB cream, whatever product you put on, it just glides on. So I really like that. It really uh, kind of hides fine lines and stuff like that. I'm going to show it to you guys one more time. It's the No Filter Poreless Primer. It's a beautiful packaging as well. So with the primer, I usually just go in the areas where I need a little bit more. So my cheeks, forehead, chin, and a little bit on the nose. So uh, just a, a little heads up, I have super sensitive skin, not to the products, just to pressure. So if my face turns a little red, it's literally because I'm adding pressure. So with the primer, I try not to like rub it. I kind of want to press it into my skin to kind of really get in those pores. So you can see my face is turning a little red. Super, super sensitive skin when it comes to pressure. So 
gently applying it. I like to use my ring and my middle finger. Your ring finger tends to have the least amount of pressure. So you're not gonna damage or you know uh, add too much pressure to uh, your face, especially the gentle areas and the sensitive areas of the face. So once we have the primer on, I like to wait just a little bit right before going into my foundation. I want it to settle in and work its magic. With foundation, um, I'm gonna be using the Il Maquillage. I woke up like this, I'm number 105. I'm super, super happy with this product because although my face turns red, I have yellow undertones. So I always have, it's so challenging for me to find foundation. So when I did the test online, I was a little skeptical at first and when it arrived, I was just so shocked. Um, so I really like this. I do like a more natural look. You can always, this is a demi matte formula. So what that means is that it's matte, but it doesn't look like a corpse. So it has a natural like finish. Uh, if you have a more oily skin type, you can set it with powder. I recommend everyone set it with the powder. Uh, you could apply this with your fingers. You can apply it with various types of brushes. I'm gonna be using a brush on myself today. And what I typically do is I actually have a palette, but I'm just gonna be doing it on the back of my hand. It's one pump. Uh, this foundation glides on the skin. It looks like skin. It has hyaluronic acid, which really helps with uh, hydration. Uh, so I'm gonna use this little brush. And the number that I'm using is 105. So what I literally do is take half of the product and I apply it on my cheeks, my nose, and my chin. So what I want to do, and this is kind of like a makeup artist trick, we like to use thin layers and build that way instead of just putting a bunch up from the jump off. So I'm going to go ahead and just blend. I'm blending it, and I'm making sure that I'm applying it evenly throughout my face. The key is to have a coverage that looks natural for me. This is the look that I'm going for. And because I'm uh, addressing a class that's more for every day, I also feel that that looks great. So once you had um, your foundation blended, I like to make sure that I bring it down. I mean, obviously it really matters uh, what you're wearing. I'm just reading through this question. Um, yeah, before I start the base, I want to make sure that my face is clean and then I add moisturizer. You know, I'm not sure what your guys' skincare routine is at, is like, but we all have different skin types. So as, as long as you're using the moisturizers appropriate for your skin type, you know, you want to prep with that. I also use the, um, I also use the poreless face pr um, primer to prep my skin. And now I'm using the foundation. I will go in once again with a secondary layer with the rest of it. I'm going to apply it on my face. And I'm just gonna apply it with a thin layer once again. But because my my red, like the red part of my face or my problem area are my cheeks, I usually uh, save that for the end. And what I do is I, I'm gonna turn to the side so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I tilt my brush, I pat it on, or cover it so seamlessly with the rest of my face. Uh, because we are and we have already used um, a thin layer prior to it and then another layer everywhere else. So I just want to show you guys this is typically how I would like my base for an everyday look. Because we want to look extra flawless today I'm going to apply a half a pump more just so you guys can see how how this is such a buildable product. So once again I'm just putting a little bit more and the key is blending. Um, like I said, this is a, a very nice foundation that really mimics skin. It looks like skin. It feels lightweight. And it lasts all day, which is very important for me as a makeup artist. I'm constantly on the go, especially if I'm working with a personality or a celebrity. Um, I don't really have time to touch up. It's about them. So I really like this because I can do it in the morning and totally forget about it for the rest of the day. Um, whatever is left on my brush, I put some on my ears because my ears tend to be a little bit on the red side, especially if I get nervous and I'm slightly nervous right now. So 
I'm gonna apply some on the ears, make sure that it's all blended. And I really like how it feels and it looks lightweight. I'm applying some on the lids of my eyes, on my eyelids. Now, once I have that done, I'm gonna go in with concealer and I'm gonna be using the Buck on Flawless. Um, and it comes in a really nice, it comes in a really nice tube. It looks pretty. It's what I really like about this concealer is that um, it covers. So I don't have super dark under eye circles, but if you had a problem area where you needed to cover any darkness or correct anything, Il Maquillage sells really amazing corrector that you could dab on first and then go in with your concealer. One thing I forgot to mention about the foundation is that there are 50 shades, so the shade range is amazing and everybody can find a color for themselves. Um, this uh, concealer is oil-free, so I really like it. I'm just gonna apply three dots and then I'll do two on the bottom just so we could blend it into the skin. And what I'm gonna do is take my ring finger, so you know, the ring finger, rub them together so it creates a little bit of warmth and then I'm just gonna pat underneath. I really like the concealer to look natural. I don't like a heavy application. So once I do that, I can determine if I want more. For me, this is okay. I have melasma and the foundation already covered most of it. I really like that. Um, I'm gonna go in once again with three dots and then two more on the bottom. Because I have the melasma in this area, I'll just add an extra dot on this side. Once again, I'm gonna rub my fingers together to go ahead and create some heat. And I'm literally, I'm turning to the side so you can see, I'm literally just dabbing, dabbing, dabbing. I want to press it and melt it into my skin. I want to create the illusion that this is actually my skin. Um, so I really like it. I'm going to go in with one more dot right here because I can see a little bit of my melasma showing. And um, because I want my face to look unison um, and like one color, and I'm also, if I'm doing this in a rush in the morning, I want my face to be like quick, done quickly. And I'm kind of, instead of using a primer, I'm just gonna use one dot, one little dab of the eye, the concealer on my eyelids. And I'm just gonna gently apply it. Because my, the top of my lids, and a lot of people as well, can look veiny, can look red. Some people it looks dark. So I'm just applying this once again with my ring finger. So, I'm gonna apply a little bit more, I'm super red here. Um, another thing that I really like about this concealer is that you can also use it to spot conceal. So a lot of concealers, if you use it here, they're too emollient and you can't use it everywhere else on your face. I really do like that you can do this. I don't really have much um, areas to conceal, but I will just use it here where I have a little bit of hyperpigmentation and I'm just gonna dab it. You can also feel free to use a brush, but I really just like how when you press and tap, tap, tap with the hand, it looks super natural and it melts into the skin. So I'm pretty much good to go. Now, if you're doing your makeup in the winter and your nose tends to turn a little red, then you can just dab some on your nose. After concealer, uh, the key to having um, an all day foundation that's going to last all day is setting it. And so I'm going to be using the Il Maquillage Trans Transparent Loose Powder. So it looks like this. And it's finely milled. It's really nice. It's good for all skin colors. It's a matte finish. And I'm just going to go ahead and use a brush like so. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and set my under eyes first because that's where I want to kind of diminish the uh, wrinkles and the fine lines here. So what all I'm going to do is roll it on the opposite way. So I'm going to roll two, like two rows down. Instead of dusting it, I prefer to roll it from the outer edges inside. Once again, I'll take a little bit more powder. I always tap it. 
I'm gonna do a little bit on my lids. Next, I'm gonna take a larger powder brush. These are my notes, guys. And I'm gonna go ahead and just set the rest of my foundation. So I'm taking the powder, tapping it, and I'm gonna press, I'm gonna like pat it on my face. I tend to um, sweat a little easily, and sometimes in New York when I'm working, even though it's winter time, a lot of the studios where us makeup artists work in, they get pretty hot when they turn off the AC and stuff like that for sound. So I always make sure that I set my makeup. So once you have it set, after you've done patting it, you can go ahead and just buff it into your skin to make sure that everything is nice and even. The next thing that I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, this, this powder also works very nice if you have to touch up throughout the day. Um, whether you want to add a little bit more concealer or you just want to blot your face with the tissue or a blotting paper and then just go over with the powder. It feels really great. It just kind of like refreshes your, it makes your makeup look, you know, less oily or greasy. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the Waka Waka Mineral Big Bronzer. I really like it. Um, this powder does work for dry skin. Um, it is a mattifying look. So if you're going for a dewy look, then you can just do it on the T-zone and kind of avoid this area. Um, for, like I mentioned earlier, for me, skin preparation is super important because if you prepare your skin uh, with proper moisturizer and hydrate it, and then you put your foundation on, you can still set it and it won't look cakey. This is finely milled, so it's wonderful, even for dry skin, for all skin colors and um, skin types. However, Il Maquillage also has powders, loose powders that cater to different skin colors. So you guys can check that out on the website as well and see whatever is more suitable for you. Um, I'm going to go in with the Waka Waka, um, the Mineral Baked Bronzer. So I'm not going to use this necessarily as a contour, but I'm kind of going to warm up my face. I can use the same brush, actually. And um, I'm going to tap it. And I'm just going to do a little bit on my forehead, a bit on my nose. So one of the things that I like to do is... Um, because my face is a little bit longer, I usually try to find this little part of my ear and I just kind of go slightly slanted and just warm up my face. So I'm not necessarily super contouring, I'm just kind of adding warmth, but I use that as my, you know, kind of like base, like the blueprint, the areas to where I'm gonna go. I definitely wanna add a little warmth here on my chin. I'm also gonna come from the back and do like a wannabe contour, but not really. Coming from like where the ear starts, all the way back there. You can bring it down on your neck. Add a little bit of warmth there as well. And this color is the Waka Waka. It's a baked bronzer. A little goes a long way. You can always add more. So I like to start soft and go in with more if I need to. I don't like to go heavy because that's a little bit harder to adjust and correct once you've gone a little too heavy. So I like to go in with a light hand and then I can add a little bit more if I feel that I need to. Another thing that I feel, whether you're contouring or you're uh, adding bronzer on your face to warm up your face, especially in the winter when we look a little bit more pale or like not as glowy and warm, you can use your fingers, two fingers from the side of your nostril, and that could be like an area of demarcation as to not come in. If you do make the mistake and you go in a little too, too, like way too in or way too down, you can always just take a little bit of concealer, dab it, and blend it or pat it, and that's gonna really just kind of like, it's gonna look like an underpainting. So you can just, you know, makeup is pretty easy. You can always adjust things. It's not the end of the world if you make a mistake because the concealer is here to save our day. You can also go with your foundation. So once I've done this, it's just to add a little bit of warmth to my face because when we do foundation, uh, it kind of makes our face just look like one unison color and we want to add some dimension, some warmth to our face. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and use is the, I'm a huge fan of blush. A lot of people tend to shy away from blush. I love blush so much. This is the Bootylicious. It's a really nice color. It's like a rose. It looks great on a lot of skin colors. Um, so I'm gonna go in with a brush and just apply it. Um, I, a lot of people like to tell you to smile. I prefer to not because when I smile, then my blush comes down. 
So I like to just go right above where I use the bronzer and I lightly go in a backwards motion and bring it kind of upward. I really like that. You want, we're trying to bring the face up and high. Um, so I try to make sure that I keep my face regular and then I just go on the highs of my cheeks and bring it up. And this color is really nice. It works with all skin colors. Um, especially like medium to darker skin colors also look really great in this color. Uh, it's called Bootylicious. It's a mineral bronzer, I mean blush as well. So I like to make sure that I bring it up. And because I have a larger face, I can get away with putting a little bit more. I feel that people with smaller faces should kind of keep it on the highs of their cheeks and back. But if you have a, a, a little bit of a bigger face like I do, then you could definitely add a little bit more to the front. So the blush is very nice. Once again, that's the color Bootylicious. And this blush will last you a very long time. I have a brush here, sorry. A little goes a long way. The next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is um, I'm gonna be using the Halo. It's the Mineral Bake Highlighter. They have a couple of different options, a few different options of, uh, of highlighters that you can use, so I really like that. I'm going to go ahead and just apply a small amount I don't like too much highlighter, but I think it's really great. I like to do it in a C, right above the blush on the outer edge. So just gently apply some of it. And this once again, this is the, the Halo Mineral Baked Highlighter. And they have different colors um, that you can choose from according to your skin color or the type of um, finish that you like. Some people like colors that are more bronzy mixed in with a little bit of highlighter. So they have really cool options. You guys could check it out. I use my finger and I just apply a little bit on the bridge of the nose, just on the high point. And it kind of looks like you uh, just put it right here. I don't like to bring it down too much. I just leave it up here. And you can definitely do right above your cupid's bow. I would shy away from bringing it too high up because then it'll look like you ran a five mile a uh, marathon and it could it could appear in certain photos like it's a little bit um, like sweat. So I try to keep it right on the cupid's bow and it looks really nice. So with highlighter you can go in and do a little bit more if you like or a little less. So another thing um, that people like to do is they take the highlighter and they just put it here on the inner corners and their tear ducts. You can do that as well. So once again, this is the Mineral Baked uh, Highlighter um, Halo in the color Halo. And as you can see, I'm pretty tan, but it works well for my skin color as well. Um, there's different options. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to do my brows. So I'm going to let you guys know in advance because I'm doing it on the Zoom uh, on, the, on my iPad camera. It might look a little funny and not super perfect, but I'm going to try my best. I'm going to be doing the Il Maquillage one in the, um, in the color Coco. It looks like this, sorry, Il Maquillage Color Cocoa. And it's really great for um, creating like a natural look. So what I do with my brows is I like to define the bottom part and then I go in with the top and I define this top part area and I worked onto the tail of my brows. Um, I unfortunately don't have amazing bushy brows I wish I did, but I really like this because it helps me work with what I have. And so I like to just define my shape. And then in the front, I go a little bit up, just like that. Keep it quick and simple. You can use a disposable spoolie, or you can use a brush that has you know, that as well. So I'm just brushing it out. Thank you so much, Etzel. The next thing is I'm going to go ahead and go on this side. I'm going to apply just once again the bottom part. I like to define that. Then I'm going to go into the top and kind of define the top area. Now, if by any chance because of the pandemic and you live in a state where you're not able to go ahead and uh, go get your brows done and you need to, a really nice tip is using the concealer. And you can just use the concealer with a like a flat brush like this. You can apply the concealer on the back of your hand and you can kind of shape it to kind of fake a, 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 like you went to get your brows done. So that's a quick, easy trick 
that you can do in between appointments, in between um, threading or however you, uh, you know, groom your brows. So I really like this because this, this brow pen, you don't, thank you so much, Chelsea. Um, you don't really need to use a brow gel. You can if you like, El Maquillage has some really great ones too. But like I said, I don't really have a lot of brows. So I don't have to do that necessarily. Um, just to show you guys how someone would go ahead and do that, I'm going to uh, show you guys just putting a little bit of concealer on the back of my hand with the brush. I'll just show you how you could easily do that uh, if you uh, had to skip an appointment. So I'm gonna take some of the product and you could do it on the top too. I'm just gonna do it on the bottom. You can also use it with more of a thin brush that has an angle for a more precise look. Um, I just did it like that. So as you can see, the highlighter is working in with my natural body temperature and it's kind of melting and it's looking pretty natural, um, like a glow from within. I really like that. Now quickly, I'm just gonna do eyes and mascara. So what I do is I take the actual bronzer Waka Waka that I use to warm up my face and I take an eyeshadow brush And what I do is I just do it right on my crease very quickly. And when you would do this look at home, this is gonna be a lot quicker than what I'm doing here because I'm chatting and trying to explain about the amazing products that I'm using. So I'm just going on the crease. Sometimes people have a hard problem uh, finding their crease so you can kind of close your eyes and open it and wherever the brush lands, you can just go on top of that. You can also see the crease. Um, I really like this look that I'm doing because even people with monolids and, and uh, um, deep set eyes, you can do this look. It's super easy and it's, it's great for all eye shapes. So I'm just literally going on my crease. If you happen to have a smaller crease, you can go above that area. If you don't have a crease, you can just blend it from the bottom going up. And then at the end, I just like to go on the and bring it up and out just to create the illusion of my eyes being a little bit elongated and up. My eyes go slightly down, so I like to kind of just turn them up a little bit. Once again, you can always use your finger to kind of blend it out a little bit. And this is like a natural everyday look, so it doesn't have to be super perfect and it doesn't have to be too intense. And that's what I like. If you wanted to go like this, this is great. You added a little bit of color to your lids. I'm gonna use the amazing um, quad from Il Maquillage. And um, no, Kali, it, a fingers, when you're doing makeup, you're painting, it's a form of art and you can use your fingers just like any painter could use their hands or use a brush. Um, there are not a lot of rules to makeup. It's whatever makes you feel comfortable. I really feel that, you know, we should all embrace doing makeup the way we like to. It's really fun. We don't want to take away the fun from it. So this is the Color Boss Squad. Uh, it's an eyeshadow quad, and this is the real deal, 990. And these are the amazing colors. So I'm going to be using this color today. So I'm gonna take an eyeshadow brush and I'm literally just gonna pat the color onto my lid. You can use your fingers as well. And I'm just applying it on my eyelid, close to the baseline, the lash line. And the color I'm using is 967. So in the quad, I'm using this color. And as you can see, it already looks Kind of like it's blended out because of the Waka Waka bronzer that I used before. And you could easily do this with your fingers too. I just didn't want to get a little messy so I'm doing it with the brush. The next thing I'm going to do is take the same brush that I used my Waka Waka with and I'm just blending it into the Waka Waka bronzer. And lastly, you can use a Q-tip, cotton swab, your finger. I'm gonna use a pencil brush and I'm gonna use the light color. And this is number 970, keep rolling. And I'm just gonna go right in the tear ducts. You're welcome, Casey. 
And this quad is really nice because you can do a subtle everyday look or you can also go ahead and do a dramatic look. I'm just taking out this brush hair, thank you. And I'm just doing it on the tear duct to add a little bit of highlighter. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna answer this question very quickly. Um, you said if you don't have a bronzer, what could you use? You can use a taupey or, or a medium color. Like if you bought this quad or you have it at home, you can use this color. Uh, it's whatever, I'm just trying to diffuse it a little. So I like this, it's kind of like a pick me up in the morning, especially if I didn't get much sleep the night before. After this, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some mascara. I'm going to be using the um, I Icon Mascara. This is a volume and intense curl mascara. This is a mascara that doesn't flake. It also has a, um, a really nice applicator. So you like to, you should wiggle, wiggle, and then extend, wiggle, wiggle, and then extend. Once again, I'm doing this on my iPad, so it's a, a little more challenging to do. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. And this is a buildable mascara. So you can go ahead and add more layers for time purposes and to save time, I'm just gonna apply a little bit on the, la on the bottom lashes. Um, but I really do love this mascara. Uh, I used it the other day. I, I finally went to work for the first time here in New York and I was on set and I had this and I had a face shield on and it didn't, it didn't flake, it didn't melt onto my face, didn't smudge, so I really like that. Somebody's asking, do you have tips for setting foundation to minimize makeup? Um, yeah, you want to use a translucent setting powder like the one that I did. Um, for me, I like to, I, if you have uh, concerns about fine lines, I wouldn't bake. I would use more of the technique that I did, which is rolling the brush underneath your eyes in the area um, opposite from where your wrinkles go. So if your fine lines go outward, then roll the brush inward. If you're setting your foundation, then you can go ahead and, you know, pat it and then buff it. Um, those are my tips. Last but not least, I'm going to be using the uh, Waterproof Lip Liner Vintage. So this is really good if you uh, want to have something on all day. I always suggest having a nice sharpened pencil. Another tip is starting from the outside of your lips and coming in. Sometimes people like to do an X in the front, just like an X where your cupid bow is at. And once again, out and in, I mean, from the outer edge going in. And you can see where I put the highlighter, the halo highlighter. It looks very subtle, it's not too dramatic. Next, I'm gonna be going in with the Infinity Longwear Matte Cream Lip Product. It's a matte lipstick. And this is in number 419, 418 Matte Doll. So this has intense pigment. It's really great if you like a super strong look. I'm gonna go in with a little more subtle look because this is for everyday look. So I'm gonna put some on my palette and I'm gonna use a flat brush. One thing I do recommend if you're gonna use a lip liner and a matte product, make sure that you exfoliate your lips the night before or the day of and also have a high, like a hydrating lip balm or something of the sort and then you can just stab it off and go in with this to make sure that your lips are soft and, and ready for, you know, just the way you prep your skin, you wanna prep your lips. So I take a little bit on the brush and I'm just patting it on. I want a softer look. And I use a lip liner just to add a little definition to my lips. And that's pretty much it. That's an everyday look. Last but not least, I wanna set this in with the Il Maquillage Hydrating Spray. And I really like this hydrating spray because um, the, it's a fine mist that sprays on your face. It's not like splattered on. It really sets your makeup. And since we use powder, once we go in with this spray, it really sets the makeup and it minimizes the appearance of the powder products that we use. And it makes it look like real skin. Thank you so much, Sarah. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray it a couple of times. Now here's my trick. 
I like to take my hands, rub them together, and press it. Once again, the warmth of your hands is really going to create the illusion that you have skin. And the highlighter is now looking really glowy. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. And um, I really appreciate that you guys joined me. If you guys have any questions that I could answer, um, I'm going to take a few minutes to answer some of the questions here, if you have any. You asked me to turn to the side. Yeah, this is how the highlighter looks. It looks really good, very natural. It looks like a glow. Now, if you're not into a super glowy look, you can still set with the spray and then you can go in and kind of like, um, I don't have any products here, but you can kind of just like press in areas that, for example, if you feel that you have gotten sweaty while you're doing your makeup because you live in a hot area, you can go ahead and just kind of like tap where you feel you need a little bit more. Thank you so much. Um, Okay, and also, um, somebody asked, are there any more tips? Yes, if you have dark under eye circles, you definitely want to make sure that you're hydrating your eyes um, with an eye cream, and also to cover any darkness, you want to go in with a corrector first. Depending on your skin tone, that can range from pink, pink peach, yellow, or orange. And you can go onto the Il Maquillage website. They have, uh, they have the um, correctors there. I do recommend using the setting powder and the spray. Um, I really like the powder because it sets the foundation right away and the spray just kind of gives you a nice finish and makes it look more natural. Um, Sarika asked if you should apply moisturizer on first. Definitely, before I showed up to the class, I applied serum, moisturizer, and eye cream, and then I started with a primer when I met you guys here. Um, thank you so much, um, Christina. I also have yellow and olive undertones and the foundation, if you do the test, it really worked for me. And I also have redness as you can see. Um, Steffi, if uh, you can pick the right color of highlighter and bronzer depending on your skin color. Um, and you can see on the website, they have the various colors there. And on the bottom, they also have people that are wearing it. And some of the comments have people like, oh, I'm using Halo. So it's really cool to see how it looks on different people. Um, that's very nice. Also, if you happen to be a little bit of uh, darker skin tone and you want to go with something not so white, you can go with more of a, a bronzer, um, like a bronzy color, like a, a, a more a warmer tone. Um, somebody else asked me, thank you, Erica. The right blush is more about your mood and your vibe, how you dress, uh, the style and the way you want, the makeup style you want to do. I always feel that rose colors are good for everyone. I feel that oranges and peach colors look really good on people with medium to darker tones. Um, it, you know, um, you always can try things. I, I usually like to go with more of a bold br blush and then you can go softer by applying like with a light hand. Um, for flaky dry skin, I would recommend hydrating your skin with a moisturizer that's great for your skin tone, your skin type. And then obviously you can use a primer to really, uh, you know, prep your skin for the foundation. Deborah, if you uh, take the quiz online, they really ask you amazing questions and um, they send you the foundation. You could try it at home. They, they are almost always right on the dot. Uh, I did it that way and that's how my color, it's perfect for me. Um, so me, for a rounder face, I also have a rounder face. Um, I like to, if you're going to use your bronzer, you can kind of use it like a contour, but make sure it's not super heavy. You want to make sure that it's matte, not a shimmering one. Um, I like to kind of do a three, right, on the face. So a little bit here on the forehead, also here. I like to go where this little thing is in your ear and just kind of go straight, but at a slight diagonal and two fingers away from your nose, the outer portion of your nostril. And that's really gonna add a little bit of definition. You can totally feel that that's right underneath your cheekbones, your actual cheekbones. So we're just adding a little definition. You can start out by going light and going heavier, definitely behind the ear and underneath here. This is why I like the Waka Waka blush because it's, I mean bronzer because it's matte. So it allows you to do a little bit more of that as well. Um, I'm going to ask a, answer a couple more questions that I see here. Um, 
Caroline, you can choose the right bronzer color uh, depending on your skin color. A lot of the times, um, some bronzers can look uh, orangey on lighter skin colors, so you want to go more with the taupe color. Um, I feel that sometimes we may want to go with a bronzer that's too dark for our skin color and that could create problems. So if you're choosing a, a bronzer, make sure that it's according to your skin color. If you go to the uh, Il Maquillage website, you'll see it's like lighter and then darker color, so you can kind of see where your shade range is from there. Also, when you're applying your bronzer, you may have the right color. It's just sometimes people tend to be a little heavy handed. So I like to go in as I did today. I did a softer and then I added more as I needed. Um, and I think that's pretty much all the questions that I saw here. Um, can't caramel, I just saw about over 60, but I don't know what it mentioned. Um, Aaron, the mascara that I use is the Icon mascara and it's a volume and it's a curl mascara. I have the super straightest lashes and it doesn't make them super straight. So I really can vouch for this myself, but you definitely want to curl your lashes first and really curl it and hold it there. And then you can apply the mascara, wiggle from the base and extend out, wiggle and then extend out. Um, Latoya, you can match the concealer. If you take the test, it'll give you the right color um, and you can try it. Well, I think those are all the questions that I see here. Thank you so much, everyone. Oh, um, one last question. Carmel, tips with um, 60 and uh, with bronzer and blush. Well, one of the tips that I gave is I recommend not to smile when you're doing, if you're 60 and over, when you're doing the um, bronzer, definitely don't do this because if you, as we uh, age a little bit, our face, you know, doesn't have the, as much uh, collagen in it. So we don't want to smile and then the blush comes down. So definitely with your bronzer, you want to use it more of a warmth than a contour. So on your forehead, a little bit on your cheeks, on your chin, on your nose, and the same with your blush, you kind of want to go on your actual highs of your apples and back. If you have a rounder face, whether you're 60 or not, you definitely can bring it in a little bit more. That, those are my tips. Everyone, thank you so much. I really had a lot of fun today. I hope the tips were helpful. Um, be sure to be on the lookout. Uh, Il Maquillage will be sending you an email with a special offer. Thank you so much. Have a great evening, everyone.